that time of year again. Fall sports are underway, which means Friday Night Lights and you're watching the kids play football. It's a good time to talk about Michigan's youth concussion protocol statute. And for that, in our Know the Law segment, we bring in Tom Sinus from Sinus Jameis Law Firm. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, Todd. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, concussions, boy, over the past decade. I really did hit the news and the importance of keeping our kids safe as they play these sports. What is this statute? Can you explain it for us? Sure. Back in 2012, recognizing what what you were just saying, recognizing a growing awareness of concussions and the danger to kids, the legislature passed what many people refer to as the youth concussion statute. And it's been around for a long time. And it, it has a number of provisions, but the two most important ones deal first with when a player needs to be removed, and then secondly, when a player can return. So they're, they're short. I'll, I'll read them to you. The first one applies to, to coaches or other adults, and it says a coach or other adult employed by or volunteering for or otherwise acting on behalf of an organizing entity during an athletic event shall immediately remove from physical participation in an athletic activity a youth athlete who is suspected of sustaining a concussion during the athletic activity. So that's a a broad application, right? It applies to any adults working in that role, and it applies in any instances when the youth athlete is suspected of sustaining a concussion, and it, it imposes a requirement that the adult remove the player. The second sentence pertains to when the player can come back. And again, it's short but specific. It says that a youth athlete who has been removed from physical participation under this law shall not return to physical activity until he or she has been evaluated by an appropriate health professional and receives written clearance from that health professional authorizing the youth athletes return to the athletic activity. So the player has to be evaluated by a specific professional and has to receive written clearance to return. And and these laws remain on the books. And as we saw last year, the Court of Appeals dealt with a case interpreting these laws within the context of a civil lawsuit. But the most important point for this part of our discussion is just to remember that these that these obligations apply and they apply across the board. And they are designed, of course, to protect, protect against the danger that you mentioned. Here's what the Court of Appeals actually said at the very beginning of this decision. It says, youth sports offer extensive benefits to kids, camaraderie, discipline, exercise, and self-esteem, just to name a few. There can be a dark side to youth sports, however, and one of the darkest is the possibility of short-term and long-term injury from concussions. Now, that's directly from the Court of Appeals. It's it's rare to see a Court of Appeals start a decision that way, but I think it underscores exactly what you were just saying. When it comes to that decision, uh, what's the takeaway? Uh, for Let's say for parents. I think the coaches... Uh, get the info right up front. They know what they should and shouldn't do. But for for folks watching this right now, when it comes to this statute and the law, when it applies to youth and concussions, what's the takeaway? The takeaway from this case is that those adults falling in that category, meaning adults employed by volunteering or otherwise acting on behalf of an, an organizing entity of a sport, that those adults have the obligation to immediately remove the player. And of course, here's the the important part of the case. If they don't, they can be subjected to civil liability, to a civil lawsuit. That's the significance of this case. The Court of Appeals went through a long analysis to conclude, yes, we have these obligations under statutes, but what happens if an adult doesn't follow that rule? Well, the court held that that adult can be sued in a civil lawsuit on behalf, by, the, by the injured athlete. And what the court concluded is that this statute creates what the law calls a legal duty. And it, that just means that you have a responsibility towards someone or towards something. 
And the court in this case concluded after reviewing the the actual concussion statute, they said that we conclude that the statute imposes a legal duty on the part of coaches and other covered adults to remove a youth athlete who is suspected of sustaining a concussion from further involvement in sports. So it's narrow in that it only applies to youth athletes and that it only applies to those suspected of sustaining a concussion, but it's the court is clear in holding that when the adult doesn't follow that rule, the adult can be subjected to civil liability in a lawsuit like in this case. And so the court of appeals in this case sent the case back down to the trial court to develop more of the record, but concluded that it could be very possible that the adults um, implicated in that case could be subjected to civil liability. Uh, So the next time you see uh, your kid or your neighbor's kid being pulled from that Friday night football game, realize that there is a legal obligation for that coach uh, to pull that student from the game if a concussion is suspected beyond the fact that we all want our kids just to be safe and not suffer any short-term or long-term damage. Tom, thank you so much for explaining the law. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me people want to find anything else out, they can find us on our website, www.sinusdramus.com. Give us a call in West Michigan at 616-301-3333 or shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus out there. Be safe.